Hello, and welcome back to Graph Theory, and uh, in particular, welcome to our uh, what will be our final video lecture of the uh, to, to spring 2020 semester. So um, I want to just tell you about one of kind of my favorite topics that this comes up in different kinds of classes, but in particular, you can you can bring it up when you're talking about planar graphs, and that is the uh, classification of regular polyhedra. All right, so uh, our goal in this final video lecture of this semester is to classify regular polyhedra. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you what I mean by a polyhedra. You're looking at some examples of them there. There's five of them. There's the tetrahedra on the far left of your screen, which is made out of four uh, triangular faces that meet three at a vertex. In every one of these polyhedra, the faces always meet two along every edge. The cube uh, 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 is the next one you can see there. Uh, it's a regular polyhedron. It's made out of six square faces that meet three at a vertex. The octahedron is made out of eight triangular uh, um, vertices that meet, or faces, excuse me, that meet four at a vertex. The dodecahedron is a regular polyhedra which consists of 12 pentagonal faces that meet three at a vertex. And then finally, the icosahedron is, is a polyhedron that's made out of 20 regular uh, triangles, uh, equilateral triangles that come together uh, at five at a vertex. All right, so there's some examples of what I mean by polyhedra. Let me give you a definition of what I mean by polyhedra, regular polyhedra. Try to keep those things in view. So by a regular polyhedron, what I mean is it's a surface. Okay, it's, or, or you can think of it as a solid, but, I, but in particular, I mean this, the surface of the solid. And that surface is made out of regular polygons. So the polygons, they, they all have to have the uh, same, like uh, uh, equal side length and equal angles is what I mean by a regular polygon. They're all congruent. So when you make a regular polyhedron, if you're gonna make it out of equilateral triangles, then every one of its faces has to be equilateral triangle. Uh, and, and they have to have the same number of polygons meeting in every vertex, all right? So like we said, the tetrahedra is an example of these where the regular polygon is a triangle. All those triangles are equilateral, they're congruent, same side length, same angles, and they come together uh, at three at a vertex. Every single vertex in the tetrahedra has three. All right, so the cube is where the regular polygons are squares. Octahedron is also triangles. Dodecahedra and the polygons are, are uh, pentagons. And in the icosahedron, it, they're, they're triangles. Okay, so that's what I mean by a regular polyhedra. If you have a bunch of uh, polyhedra laying around your house, uh, I mean polygons rather, regular polygons, uh, uh, you can try to you know, fold them up and, and assemble one of these things. It's regular polyhedra. So the adjective regular here always means that each face is congruent to every other face, regular polygon. Okay. If we quote unquote inflate, uh, I, I don't have um, a good mathematica demonstration of this. I wanted to try to make one, but just imagine sort of sticking a, a needle into one of those polyhedra above and pumping air into it until it inflates out into a sphere. Uh, I'm denoting the sphere by S2, it's kind of, kind of common notation. Then using a stereographic pro pro projection map uh, 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 from the sphere, well, minus one point, I've decided to delete what I call the South Pole, the point zero, zero, negative one. You can, you can map the sphere one to one, uh, uh, with the sphere minus a point, one to one and onto, onto the plane. Uh, you, that's usually called stereographic projection. It's, it's how a lot of maps are rendered, flat maps of our spherical Earth. Here I'm actually writing down specific formulas for it if you want to. Uh, play around with this map. You just take a point x, y, z on the sphere. So it's got three coordinates. Of course, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to one because it's on the sphere of radius one. But but I'm omitting the, the south pole. No, no z equals negative one point. And you just send that point to uh, x over z plus one and y over z plus one. And that maps the sphere minus the south pole one to one and onto onto the plane. So So if you kind of think about taking one of these polyhedra inflating it uh, uh, so, so that it sort of gives its vertices and edges as curves on the sphere. And then you map that, those curves on the sphere to the plane uh, 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 with the stereographic projection map, then you'll end up getting a planar drawing, uh, 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 in, in the, a planar graph in the plane uh, uh, for each one of those polyhedra. So every polyhedra, uh, every regular polyhedra, what I'm saying, it corresponds to some planar graph that you can draw in R2. And you can realize that planar graph with the stereographic projection, if you like. And in this planar graph, 
every face has the same length. Uh, that's because uh, the polygons that we made uh, of the polyhedra with are all congruent. It's the number of sides in the polygon. So, so if you did this to the tetrahedra above, when you look at its planar graph, you're going to have uh, a, a planar graph with uh, every one of the faces is going to be bounded by a three cycle. If you do it with the cube, every one of the faces is going to be bounded by a four cycle and so on. All right. So let's take a look at what those graphs look like. Can't really squeeze them all. Well, I guess I can. They barely fit here. So here are the planar projections of the five polyhedra that I showed you above. The planar projection uh, of the uh, tetrahedra is here in figure one. The planar projection of the cube is down here, and it looks like it's labeled figure two. Uh, uh, figure three is the planar projection of the octahedron. Uh, uh, the figure uh, four is the planar projection of the dodecahedron. You can see these five pentagonal sides. Uh, if you like, the distortion is kind of coming from the stereographic projection. It's the same reason why a flat map of the Earth always has some distortion, because as you move away from the pole, the distortion kind of becomes larger and larger, and so on. All right. So, so here, uh, every regular polyhedra is my point, uh, corresponds to some planar graph uh, in the plane. And those planar graphs in the plane are regular. They're regular. Every vertex has the same uh, uh, degree, and that's because when we defined our regular polyhedra, we said that the faces have to come together, the same number of them at every vertex. So, so this is the planar projections of those things, but the planar projection of any polyhedra, it's always a regular planar graph. Okay. So what I'm interested in is sort of classifying regular polyhedra in the sense of saying like, well, how many are there and how, and how can I tell them apart? And while I've just changed the, the question into just classifying planar regular planar graphs, uh, uh, if you take a regular planar graph in the plane, it corresponds to uh, a regular polyhedra and vice versa. So we're going to just try to classify like, well, how many of these regular planar graphs are there? So looking at some of our data here, let's notice that um, <clears throat> if uh, the graph G, uh, the planar graph G that we get from this polyhedra has N vertices and Q edges and F faces, let's just give it those usual notations, then its dual graph G star, like we saw last time, will have F vertices also have Q edges and have N faces. The dual graph is also gonna be regular. It's also going to be regular because the degree uh, of, of a vertex uh, in the dual graph is the length of a face in the graph, and those lengths are always the same. All right. So uh, let's say that G is regular of degree K. I need a new parameter. So that's how many uh, uh, edges are incident with each vertex in the graph G. And let's call its faces, uh, uh, let's say they have length L, and they're all going to be the same length, the number of sides of the polygon. So then G star is going to be regular of degree L because the degree of a vertex in the dual is just the length of the face in the graph and the faces are going to have length K for the same reason. All right. So there's just kind of setting it up. Uh, G is regular of degree K, faces of length L. The dual is regular of degree L, faces have length K. Everything, vertices and faces kind of interchange in dual. That's the all right, let's look at some degree sums. Uh, uh, one of our first theorems in the class is the sum of the degrees is twice the size, so two times Q. But in a regular graph of, of uh, every vertex has degree K uh, and it has order N, the degree sum is certainly gonna be K times N. So in G, your degree sum formula tells you that KN is 2Q. In G star, it tells you that LF is, is 2Q because every vertex in G star has degree L and there are F vertices in the dual. Yeah. Good. So, so what does that mean? That means that these numbers, these three numbers, k times n, 2 times q, l times f, they're all equal to each other. All right, that's a pretty big restriction on these numbers. Let's see if we can't uh, take advantage of that restriction to say something about how many, how many uh, polyhedra there are. If we pipe that restriction into Euler's formula, Euler's formula, you remember, says for a planar graph that n minus q plus f is always 2. So I'm just gonna plug them in. Uh, I'm gonna solve for n in this equation that I'm underlining, n is 2q over k. So I'm just replacing n in the Euler's formula with that. I'm leaving q as it is, and then I'm solving the second equation up here for f. 2q over l is f, and I'm gonna put that in. Okay, factor out a q. You can stop the video and check my algebra if you like. Let me try to make the screen look nice. Factor out a q. 
And then what do I know? Well, if Q times this quantity is equal to two, Q is the size of a graph, this quantity has to be a positive number. The, the parenthesized expression can't be zero or negative, otherwise there's no way Q times it could equal two. Okay, so I'm just taking that quantity out of there, two K minus one, or two, two over K minus one plus two over L. Uh, I don't wanna say it again, uh, uh, and it's gotta be greater than zero. And now I'm just doing some algebra. I should probably just be quiet and let you just sort of check it out. But what did I do? I added one to both sides of that. I multiplied both sides by uh, K times L uh, to clear the fractions. So if you multiply uh, uh, everything here, pardon me, uh, uh, you multiply everything here by uh, K times L, then you're gonna get some cancellation, 2L in the first term, you'd have a 2K in the second term, and then the right-hand side would be K times L. Just subtracting K times L, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, I, I guess I kind of rearranged this. Uh, I subtracted 2L and 2K from both sides, so I have KL minus those things is less than zero. So that's a negative number. And now I'm just kind of doing something almost like a completing the square trick. I'm gonna add four to both sides of that inequality because if I do that, the left-hand side factors nicely. All right, so pause the video and check out my factorization, but I've got that this product, K, which remember is the degree of every vertex in G, and L, the degree of every vertex in its dual, or if you like, the length of every face in G, uh, uh, K minus two times L minus two has to be less than four. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of just try to extract from this restriction this that, that, that on K and L uh, uh, that that inequality imposes uh, some possibilities for what kind of graph we have. Um, I didn't say this above, but I'm, I'm only interested in when these duals are also graphs. And if your graph was too regular, if G is too regular, its dual will have multi-edges. So I'm gonna assume that, that in both uh, G and G star, that their regularity is at least three, all right? So I'm gonna assume that we have at least three uh, uh, polygons together at every vertex, and that we're using faces that are at least triangles, if you like. That's just so we don't get any, any multi-edges. And it kind of fits inside of, of the, the thing we're talking about with polyhedra. The, the uh, planar graph that comes from a polyhedra will satisfy those conditions. Yeah, because you you, there are no regular two gons and, and no regular one gons. So, so, so K and L are at least three. Okay, so let's see if we can't understand uh, what kind of restrictions this thing puts on us. I've, I've got K minus two times L minus two is less than four. Let me actually highlight that because that's the kind of key equation that I'm going to be thinking about here with you guys. So, so just to bring our attention to it, I'm thinking about this. Okay, and the first thing we can say is that that equation will force both K and L to be no more than five. All right, uh, maybe pause the video and think about that. But if K or L, let's say K, is, is greater than or equal to six, well, then K minus two would be greater than or equal to four. And there's no way that you can multiply something greater than or equal to four by another integer and have the quantity come out to be less than four. So, so we've got kind of some tight restrictions. K and L are at least three, but they're no more than five. All right. So that's kind of an interesting, you know, if you remember that, that L is the uh, number of sides of our regular polygon, it means that in a polyhedra, if you're making a polyhedra with regular polygons, you, you, you can't do it with anything more than pentagons. Uh, and you can't have any more than five of them coming together at a vertex. So those are some sort of geometric restrictions on, on making one of these things. So let's just kind of start at the bottom. Uh, 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 we, can, we said K and L are at least three. So, so let's say K is three. Let's say K is three. So if K is three, well then this thing I'm underlining K minus two is a one. So, so one times something, you can forget about it. We just have to arrange that L minus two be less than four, right? And, and well, that would work for L equals uh, uh, three, four, or five. Uh, uh, as soon as L is six, then six minus two is not less than four, so like we already said. So, so if K is three, you get those three possibilities. So those things are all within our inequality range. What about if K is four? Uh, uh, if K is four, then K minus two is two. So two times an integer is less than four, strictly less than four, that integer has to be a one, yeah? So if K is four, L has to be three. There's only one pair when K is four. 
And likewise for k equal five, if, if k is five, this uh, k minus two is three, three times an integer is less than four only if that integer is, is equal to one. So again, uh, if k is five, then L has to be three. So we've kind of boiled it down. There's really just five possibilities. There's just five possibilities for these regular polyhedra because there's just five pairs K and L that can satisfy these restrictions that we've deduced from Euler's formula. So the, the last thing to do is just to kind of put those things together. Uh, I need to go back up. I'm not gonna scroll, I brought them down, but we had some expressions up there. You can pause the video and go back yourself or I'll scroll if you want to. But, but we had some expressions above where we were saying, well, I think we had it written that Q times this quantity two over K minus one times two over L was equal to two. So I'm just solving that for Q. Yeah, Q, well, K and L determine Q by that formula. And then once I know Q, then Q together with K determines N and Q together with L determines F. Okay, so once you tell me K and L, like you tell me maybe they're both three, then I'll tell you Q, I'll tell you N, I'll tell you F. I'll tell you the size of this graph, the order of the graph, the number of faces. Okay, let's just, I'm gonna show you the table. I'll show you the first row and then I'll just kind of reveal the whole thing. So if I take K and L to both be three, so you got to put those threes right here to determine Q. So you'll get two thirds minus one plus two thirds. Okay, that's four thirds minus one, that's a third. And two divided by a third is uh, six. So, so that's where I got my six. Now once I know Q is six, okay, two times six is 12, and I have to divide that by three, that's four. Two times six is 12, divide that by three, that's four. All right, so I won't walk you through the rest, but I hope you will. I hope you'll stop the video and check out the rest of this table, but you can just go at it line by line. K is three, L is four, K is three, L is five, four, three, five, three, and you'll return these, these values of Q, N, and F. And in particular, you will deduce that, that uh, uh, for K and L both equaling three, we get the configuration that was our tetrahedron above. For three and four, that's when you have uh, eight vertices, six faces, 12 edges, that's a cube. Yeah. The octahedron has uh, six vertices, it has eight triangular faces, and there are 12 edges, and so on. So, so uh, it turns out that those five things that I showed you at the beginning, which uh, were known to the ancient Greeks, they're usually called the platonic solids, there was even sort of a big religious conviction around them in the ancient Greek time. They kind of thought that they were representative of elements, you know, like earth, wind, fire, I don't, I don't know, water. You'll have to think of the fifth element. I'm not, not up on my ancient Greek uh, religion uh, practices. But those five polyhedra, the tetrahedra, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, icosahedron, they're the only regular polyhedra that you can make. You cannot create a surface using regular polygons, putting the same number of them together at each vertex, two along an edge, unless you're gonna make one of those five things. There are lots of other polyhedra in the world, but they're not regular, yeah? So they don't always use the same shape for every one of their faces. Uh, 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 so, so the only possible regular polyhedra are the five platonic solids. And this is kind of a cool illustration of planar graphs and duality and Euler's formula to deduce this, this sort of wonderful fact. All right, so thanks for listening. I hope these videos were useful for you. Uh, my little acronym down here, it stands for end of course. So we are all done and uh, uh, I will see you maybe in a Zoom meeting.